Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. I'm Alex Mary Faiga, and as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be telling you my top eight tips on how to manage your time coming from a student athlete. I do have a video where it explains in depth all of my extracurriculars and all my SAT, ACT scores, and my GPA, all of that. With all these extracurricular activities, I was able to still spend time with my friends and my family and go to parties and go hang out with them and just do all these things. And it was really fun and I'm very grateful for that. And I still ended with a 5.0 and in the top 10 of my class and just survived high school. Time management was key throughout all of this. So I'm gonna be telling you guys how to manage your time. My first step is kind of obvious and it's to prioritize your task and figure out what you can put in the back burner. You have to list out your priorities. It might be health, it might be sports, it might be school, it might be fixing your relationship with your boyfriend or your best friend. It might be anything of the sorts. And for example, mine were school, eating healthy, and being a good runner. Those are my top three priorities and everything else fell afterwards. And when you figure out what you can put on the back burner, it has to be things that just aren't as important. I know people talk about FOMO, aka fear of missing out, but that's not really that important. I mean, there are a lot of parties and other things that you just don't have to go to and you won't really be missing out. I never went to an after party at school because I just wanted sleep and I didn't feel the need to spend money also, just waste my time there. So that's just another thing that you have to figure out. If you're trying to save money, you don't want to go out with your friends and eat dinner at an expensive restaurant or go watch a movie every single weekend. Perhaps you can just ask them, oh, can we just stay at home and, fit and hang out? Things like that. Just figure out what you can do because you're trying your best to make time for the things that do matter for, to you and trying your best to reorganize your life. <laughs> this is just a bonus tip alongside that. Always make sure to tell your friends and family what your goals are so they can help you out as well and they know where you're coming from. I mean, if you're trying to eat healthy and then every night your mom's making you something that you feel isn't healthy or like hurts your stomach or something, then perhaps you just have to tell them, I wanna go grocery shopping on my own or when we go grocery shopping, I wanna go with you, things like that. Second off, this is kind of just like one of the most important things for out, throughout the rest of this, which is use a calendar. Use your calendar. You can have everything planned out and have your tasks ready. I know people like to use to-do lists, but a lot of the times, even the most successful people will say it, a to-do list is not obligatory. You won't want to do anything. It's just something that you perhaps can do and you just try and check things off. But if you have something on your calendar, like at 2 p.m., I will be doing this, then you know that that's what you're gonna be doing. Because a calendar, if you think about it, does seem way more mandatory than a to-do list does. My third tip is optimize your free time. So what I mean by optimizing your free time is when you have moments where you're not really doing much and you're just waiting around, that means that you're not doing something that you could be doing. Obviously, you guys can have your self-care time and time to relax. I will get into that later on. But what I mean optimizing your free time is if you're in the car and you're on your way to school, then you have the opportunity to study or you have the opportunity to eat if you're not driving. I mean, you could eat if you're driving. I'm not I'm not saying you can't. I'm not saying I didn't do that once or twice or three times, but you just have to optimize your free time. So if you're driving in the car, like what I would do, if you're the one driving, you can listen to podcasts or a crash course video or something about the topic that you are learning so you can just help yourself out and listen to it. If you have a push or any type of US history and you're in the Hamilton section, you could always listen to Hamilton. And I know my best friend Sydney did that. Literally our teacher told us to listen to the soundtrack and we all did it, so. And then other examples are classes that just aren't as important. So for me, sorry, no offense, I went to a Catholic school, religion class. Religion class was not as, it was just not as, you know, necessary to pay attention. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. But if you have a substitute teacher or you have free time in a class, you're better off using that time to do work that you have planned out so you can spend more time later on at home because free time in school isn't as fun, at least in my opinion, as free time when you're at home. Because when you're at home, you get to be in bed and you get to chill and you get to eat and you get to do whatever you want. And everyone will have different parts of their day. But as a student athlete, I had practice and right before practice, we had about two hours, maybe one hour, and I would spend time doing homework there as well. Sometimes people would just sit around and talk, but that's not how I work. I want to do things, I want to get things done so I can enjoy my time again when I get home. Another example is if you drive to school early in the mornings, I know my two best friends, and actually all my best friends, never mind, all my best friends went to school early and they did their homework there, and that was their time to catch up on any work because our, all of our assignments are due at 8 a.m. So sometimes they just do it then or you can study and it's easier because you're away from home. Perhaps you struggle studying at home. So 
when you're at school and you get there early, you can definitely finish your homework. And that's you optimizing your free time rather than spending time just sitting around and talking. That part of just not sitting around talking leads me into my next tip, which is tip number four. Stop wasting time on stupid stuff. What I mean by that is there are some tasks that people spend way too much time on and some tasks that people take on when they really don't have to. So things like showering, you do not need to take a 30 minute shower. You don't, I'm so sorry, but you really don't. You can take a 10 minute shower. You can take perhaps even an eight minute shower. Your shower shouldn't go over 15 minutes. Honestly, it helps the environment and it helps you not waste so much time. You don't have to be in the shower singing and belting out or creating a fake argument in your head that you'll perhaps win when you're in the shower. You don't need to go through a whole monologue and dialogue while you're in the shower. That's you wasting time. And then when you're making food, you don't have to spend so much time on something super elaborate. You don't have time for that. I'm sorry, but I was eating healthy, but I did not waste so much time on food. I would have things that were microwave vegetables, salads that were super quick to make, overnight oats, things like that. Or if you make dinner and you have leftovers, you use those leftovers for lunch. And another thing is that there are people that are going to ask you to do stuff for them. You have to be willing to say no. Sometimes you're taking on tasks that you don't even care about that don't even matter to you. Of course, if it's your family and your friends, and maybe you, you're more inclined to say yes. And if there's someone asking you to do their homework or do something for them or do this or do that, you can say no. You can always say no. I know it's that you want to be a good friend, but good people know when to say no. And they especially know when they're being taken advantage of. My fifth tip is to set time limits. So when I'm talking about time limits, it can be for studying. It can be just for any simple tasks that you have to do. If you have to work out in the morning and you know that you might spend way too much time just sitting around laying on your phone on the yoga mat, then you have to set a time limit of 20 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it is for you to do your workout. When you're going into the shower and you know that you're gonna take a long time, again, set a time limit, set a literal timer for these things. You're able to go in, get showered, and do what you have to do, and then come back out because the timer will tell you when to stop. The same thing goes for any of your homework assignments. So if you know that you take an hour to do math, which is pretty reasonable, or two hours, however much it is for you, it could be even 20 minutes, you set that timer out and you keep yourself to that timer. You're less likely to spend time on your phone, especially if your phone is the timer and you just have the timer running. And I know that sometimes it'll make you feel a bit anxious, but just know that it's not something that's super strict, but it is something that you should be doing. A bonus part of this tip is to set buffers between your assignments and the things and tasks that you're doing because our brains really can't focus for more than like 90 minutes. You have to set yourself time to take breaks, even if it's just a five minute break because you wanna get a, get a glass of water, eat a snack or go on your phone or watch a quick YouTube video. That's fine, that'll be easier for you because if you just spend so much time staring at a screen or staring at a piece of paper and you really can't figure it out, step away. Having a buffer between those time limits just makes it seem like it's an easier thing to do and it doesn't seem grueling. And of course, put these time limits into your calendar or your schedule rather than putting it into a to-do list. Next is tip number six, which is to fix your morning and night routine. You see all these YouTubers with their beautiful morning routines and they wake up and they're just so gorgeous. Or they do their night routine and they're washing their face for 30 minutes, just doing all these things. You don't need to do that. You are a student. You might be a student athlete or a student musician, whatever the heck you are. You do not have time for this. So at night, best thing to do, plan out your clothes so that when you plan out your clothes, you can wake up in the morning, even if you look horrendous, you pick up your clothes and you get dressed. You pack your bags at night and you pack your backpack at night with all the assignments that you have so you don't forget anything in the morning. And then you can just pick up your bag and perhaps your duffel bag and walk out the door. And for your morning routine, do not spend so much time doing any skincare. You don't have to have your eight step skincare routine and take 50 minutes for it because you're in school i love you and i know that some people might have bad skin and of course take care of your skin but don't just waste time doing like a random mask or something in the morning and don't especially do not waste time doing your makeup in the morning i know people like to do their makeup and they look bomb they look amazing but you're going to school or you're perhaps going to work where you don't have to have a full face of makeup the most makeup i would ever do it's probably none, but if I did do makeup, it's just lip gloss and mascara. And I just go in and go out. And if you want to put on concealer for any acne scars or anything, you can do that too, but it's honestly better to let your skin breathe. Prioritize your sleep as well, because sleep is just so important. If you don't get enough sleep, you won't be able to function. And I know that the 
is the common thing where you have to sleep seven to eight hours to nine hours, whatever it is. Some people actually need less time than this. Our bodies are able to function differently. I was able to function off of six to seven hours of sleep. My friends are able to do it off of five and then take a nap later on in the day. Your prerogative still just plan those out as well and be able to set a good sleep schedule into your morning and night. So I will go into my seventh tip, which is to not multitask and to single task. Especially if it's something important, you should not be multitasking. Multitasking leads into things that are half done and only satisfactory or perhaps less than satisfactory work. And that's not what you want to do. You want to make sure that you have a task or you have an assignment and you're putting your all into it so it can be best and you can probably do it more efficiently if you're focusing on it. But just know that some things are better to multitask, some things aren't, and that's where you just have to find a balance. But try to single task more often. My eighth and final tip is to be patient, not perfect. None of us are perfect. We will never be perfect. And that's just something you have to accept. We might fail, we might do things wrong, we might miss a workout, we might miss a practice, things like that. And that's not something you should beat yourself up about. Find time for yourself to be happy. Like I said before about buffers and setting time limits, also just make sure that you have a time where you are done with all your tasks, even if it's by like 11 o'clock and you only have 30 minutes to talk to your friends or talk to your family, have that for yourself. Have time where you set it out where you want to go on YouTube, or you want to watch Netflix or find something you can enjoy and look forward to every single day. That way you don't feel as though you're trapped in your schedule. You feel as though you're the one who runs it and you can decide what's important to you and what'll make you feel happy. If you guys enjoyed the video, I will probably be doing another video about how to study efficiently and how to manage your time then. But for now, just let me know what else you guys would like to see or if you guys would really like to see that, then I might be more inclined to do it as well. You guys are awesome and beautiful and amazing. You've got this. Now go either watch some more of my videos or figure out your schedule and manage your time. I bid you adieu, au revoir, adios, and aloha. Bye.